الله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله الحمد لله رب العالمين الرزاق ذو القوة المتين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله الذي ليس كمثله شيء وهو على كل شيء قدير وأشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم عبده ورسوله وما أرسلناك إلا رحمة للعالمين and sisters in Islam, Allah subhanah says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, kutiba alaykum al-siyamu kama kutiba ala al-ladhina min qablikum, la'allakum tattakoon. أياما معدودات فمن كان منكم مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر وعلى الذين يطيقونه فدية طعام مسكين فمن تطوع خيرا فهو خير له وأن تصوموا خير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصم ومن كان مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر ولتكملوا العدة ولتكبروا الله على ما هداكم ولعلكم تشكرون وإذا سألك عبادي عني فإني قريب أجيب دعوة الداعي إذا دعان فليستجيبوا لي وليؤمنوا بي لعلهم يرشدون أحل لكم ليلة أحل لكم ليلة الصيام to the end of these ayahs divinely committed the address here from Allah most high is to the committed Muslims Allah says Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu he is not addressing a Muslim who doesn't have any commitment in him he is not addressing the individual Muslim Allah is addressing the committed Muslim in his collective character. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu kutiba alaykum al-siyamu kama kutiba ala al-ladheena min qablikum. Allah might have addressed this to the individual Muslim. But he has ordained fasting for the community, for the society of committed Muslims. And then, with a reminder that this ordinance is the same as those 
previous ones of fasting that were communicated by Allah to the committed Muslims before us. So we get a sense when reading this ayah that we belong to a sequence of previous Muslims who bore the responsibility of abstaining from the nourishment from the food and water and the act that naturally takes place between spouses we abstain from these acts in a continuation of the act that was performed by previously committed Muslims. كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ The purpose behind this is that we, not myself or yourself as an individual, but so that we all together may develop the element of taqwa, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ For the purpose of taqwa, Siyam fasting cultivates this instinct in us as a collective body of people. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Previously, mention was made of the important barometer that taqwa serves in the lives of people. Inna akramakum عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ لَا فَضَّ لِأَحَدِكُمْ عَلَى الْآخَرِ إِلَّا بِالتَّقْوَى لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ تَتَّقُونِي يَا أُلِي الْأَلْبَابِ تَقُونِي يَا أُلِي الْأَلْبَابِ التَّقْوَى هَا هُنَا and many other ayat and ahadith that focus our attention on the element of التَّقْوَى Allah is saying the purpose of you and I we all together the purpose for our fast is for the cultivation of an instinct of taqwa in us. An instinct whose horizon is an element of fear and hope. كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that we have a notion that guides our lives, a notion of taqwa. Allah is deeply embedded in our conscience. A taqwa is the presence of Allah deep down inside our existence so that when we do something we do it with Allah present in our action when we think of something we think of it knowing that Allah is thinking with us لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ أَيَّامًا مَعْدُودَاتٍ Ramadan is not a few years. Allah, whose knowledge is unlimited, could have prescribed Ramadan to be a period of one year. 
to abstain from eating and drinking in a process of a full year and then for another cycle of 30 years you don't have any Ramadan. There could have been an allocation of a time period that is longer than the one month cycle in the year. But no, Allah who has created us, who has fashioned us, who has modeled us and engineered us, He knows the time period that we can tolerate. And the word Ma'adudat carries a shade that it is only a limited amount of days. Nothing big, nothing much which you cannot tolerate. It's within your tolerance. Ayyaman Ma'adudat. And you will see, we just began Ramadan a couple of days ago. And then the weeks are going to speed by and the Ramadan will be over. فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ Allah, if you think that Ramadan is going to tax your health, if Ramadan is a burden on your daily life, that will extract an effort detrimental to your well-being. Then Allah says, فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ Then you have the permission from Allah to break fast during those days and then to make up for them in days to come, throughout the year you have a span of 11 other months, you choose your day and you make up for the day which you could not because of purposes relating to health or sickness or purposes relating to instability and perpetual motion. فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ وَعَلَى الَّذِينَ يُطِيقُونَهُ فِدْيَةٌ طَعَامُ مِسْكِينَ فَمَنْ تَطَوَّعَ خَيْرًا فَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَهُ وَأَنْ تَصُومُوا خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ For those who cannot for an ailment or a purpose that is constantly with them, you cannot make up for breaking a day of fast in Ramadan by fasting another day, then theirs should be to feed a person a miskeen instead of that meal of iftar that he was supposed to abstain from in Ramadan and could not do so to give it to a miskeen to a person who doesn't have accessible means of obtaining food and nourishment. We always think about this on the limited one-to-one -one case, but we never think about it on the strata of society, the society that is living under the shades of the Qur'an, a society that is given the abundance of provision and sustenance, in which individuals in it may break fast to have those provisions and those meals given to others in other societies that have no access to food or to water. People are dying from malnutrition and from hunger. The abstinence, the purpose for us 
best thing is to feel for them. If we cannot, and this is the solution to the problem of hunger and poverty and malnutrition, the solution is when we feel with them. This is the solution. This is the foundation of the answer to the problem of hunger and starvation and malnutrition and dying because of a maldistribution of Allah's providence, of Allah's provisions and Allah's sustenance. So a person who cannot feel and this feeling should drive you and I and the other collective Muslims should drive us to give of what we have for those who don't have it. But if we can't, if we can't generate this feeling in us, if we can't reduce involvement in this world to a degree to begin to feel as the others who don't have feel, then the excuse of disease, of a permanent ailment, the excuse may exempt us from fasting, but it does not exempt us from the result. And the result is contributing to those who do not have. And so the person who cannot fast, in a direct sense, gives of what he has to those who do not have. And so the purpose and the reason and the result for fasting is not lost in this process. A Muslim is responsible, but he is responsible in a sense of depth. And that sense of depth is a fasting so that we, to understand the problem of poverty and the problem of dispossession and the problem of hunger, so that we, to understand it, we have to become part of that problem. And becoming part of that problem is Ramadan. But Allah has made an exemption for those who cannot because of an ailment or because of a continuous movement away from where a person considers to be his domicile, his res residence, or his place of settlement. And Allah, notice, Allah subhanahu did not say that a person is considered to be ill when such and such a thing happens or when he feels such and such a feeling and a person is not considered to be in the status or is considered to be in the status of traveling when he goes a certain distance the distances are not allocated and the human condition is not defined by Allah in a precise sense it is left in its general meaning. فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ Any one of you who considers himself to be sick, a person with an ailment or a disease, and somehow or in some way he considers fasting to harm his health to such a degree that he cannot tolerate. He is the one to make that judgment. It is not left up to me, nor is it left up to you. It is left up to the conscience of that Muslim himself. And the same is applicable to what is called suffer. It is not up to me 
or to or anyone else to say what a safar is regarding a particular individual. Some people who are healthy may go hundreds of miles and not consider themselves in a safar. Other people who are fragile may go a few miles and that to them is a safar. So this issue is left up to the determination of the conscious Muslim and only up to him to determine what is marab and what is safar because these are fluctuating definitions and relative to the contexts of the individuals and their well-being themselves. This is left up to every individual to determine for his own self. No one can make that determination for him. فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرِ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرِ This permit being, being given to you indicates that Allah wants or tends you to work not for that which is detrimental for you, but for that which is more accessible to you. يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرِ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرِ وَلِتُكْمِلُوا الْعِدَّةِ In either case, whether you give out, you hand over, you dispense with a meal for those in need, or you exempt yourself in those particular days to make up for them later on in both cases, you have to complete the cycle of 30 days. If you can't fast, there has to be a feeding of those who don't have for the 30 days. And if you can, you have to maintain your fast throughout Ramadan or in an interrupted fashion thereafter for 30 days. And so that you may come to glorify Allah for the guidance that He has given you. And so that you may offer Him His due thanks and appreciation and gratitude. This Ramadan, brothers and sisters in Islam, if we follow it in this sense, we cultivate in ourselves the element, the necessary element of taqwa, which is the yardstick to which we all are measured. If a person's taqwa is nil, Let's say if we are looking for a taqwa in a person, has any one of us ever asked himself, how many days this person fasts outside of the month of Ramadan? No. In most cases, that is not our behavior. If we want to see a person, or if we want to identify the element of taqwa, do we realize that what goes into bringing this element of taqwa out is the act of fasting, not only Ramadan, but before Ramadan and after Ramadan? How much does this person fast? Occasionally we may come across brothers or sisters of ours who are fasting in other days, who do not make a fuss about it, who go unnoticed. But it is a way that we may identify the culture of taqwa in these individuals. This is one element of identifying it. Once we begin to feel this instinct, of taqwa in us, Allah says, in an ayah that, seeming, that is seemingly irrelevant to the context of fasting, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي 
فإني قريب أجيب دعوة الداعي إذا دعان فليستجيبوا لي وليؤمنوا بي لعلهم يرشدون This ayah If we take it from the context of these other ayat that speak about Ramadan we'll find that there is nothing missing on the surface of reading these ayat if this ayah is taken from this context and placed in another place in the Quran we will find at the surface of things there is nothing missing but if you have a feel of what is Ramadan for then you begin to understand that this ayah belongs precisely where it is. If my servants, the ayah says, if my servants ask you concerning me, Allah is saying to his messenger, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ I am near to them. ونحن أقرب إليه من حبل الوريد. But why is Allah in the month of Ramadan and as we are purifying, are filtering our physical, mental, and spiritual existence, Allah is telling us that He is near to us. إني قريب أجيب دعوة الداعي إذا دعان. How many times during the year we ask Allah for things? You ask Him for victory. You ask Him for strength. You ask Him for fortitude. You ask Him for patience. You ask Him for triumph over the enemy. How many questions? How many pleas? How many bargains? How many other things have you asked Allah subhanahu throughout the course of the year? But when you are not observing Him in the fashion that you observe Him in Ramadan, He is not telling you that He is close to you. But in these days, because there's an access to Him, because of the act of fasting, and the act of fasting is not to be violated by reversing night and day, some people, in order for them to try to get by Ramadan, they want to concentrate their activities after sunset and reduce their activities during the day. No, you carry on your normal flow of activities as you would do in any other day of the year. When you are in this mood, performing your physical responsibilities like any other time and maintaining your fast, Allah, as if He is tucking in between the ayat of Ramadan, this observational ayah. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ I will respond and answer the da'wah of the person who is pleading with me, who is asking me or who is begging me. فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُ لِي Then respond to Allah. Respond to Him by observing Ramadan the way it is supposed to be observed. By observing Ramadan and then when the pressures of this world upon your existence are light and Ramadan, if it is observed the way it should be, makes these pressures upon you light. فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي And then commit yourselves to Allah and then you will achieve the degree of maturity that is expected of you out of this exercise of Ramadan. فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي 
وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ This is why this ayah belongs in the context of Ramadan. Because we trim the fat in Ramadan. Because we are light in Ramadan. Because we become, by the nature of our fasting, nearer to Allah, and He becomes nearer to us. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ And the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام says الصوم جنة فَإِذَا كَانَ يَوْمُ صَوْمِ أَحَدِكُمْ فَلَا يَرْفُثْ وَلَا يَفْسُقْ وَإِنْ شَاتَمَهُ أَحَدٌ فَلْيَقُلْ إِنِّي صَائِمٌ إِنِّي صَائِمٌ Fasting is a protective layer. It's a protective ingredient. الصوم جنة So if there approaches your day of fasting, if you are fasting, then do not give in to slipping out of this protection by misbehavior or unto be spoken words. And then if you are aggressed upon by words of aggressive nature, then say, I am fasting, I am fasting. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ اسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ الحمد لله الذي هدى وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا المصطفى وعلى آله وصحبه أولي النهى والتقى Brothers and sisters in Islam If we realize the connection that we have as obedient Muslims If we have a sense of the accessibility that is offered to us by Allah Subhanahu, then no words or a mortal human being can express the appreciation and the gratitude that is due to Allah. And Allah alone, who has made it possible for the committed Muslims because of their connection with Him to deliver what seems to be an impossible task to the attention of the world. The powers that are determined to do anything within their reach and might to destroy the viability, the vibrance, and the pertinence of everything Islamic. These forces have been defeated because of our obedience to Allah. And the successes, if any, temporarily in the past or the present, any of these successes, if 
they have scored them against us. It is because of our violation of the commands and the words of Allah. One of the advices that was sent by the leaders of the Muslim by one of the leaders of the Muslims immediately or in the years after the Prophet's death to the Muslim army at the front was that it is not by virtue of our force and our power that we are successful over our enemies, the mushriks and the kafirs. It is because of our disobedience, of our violations of anything, of a divine instruction to us, that we give the opportunity to our foes to score against us their victories. It is this sense that does not differentiate between the lifestyle of the Muslims and then their ultimate military act. This oneness of purpose, this oneness of existence that holds you and I accountable for everything that we do, that brings about the succor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that brings into our midst the help and the assistance that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for. This is why we are provided with what we deserve at the time that we deserve it. We can accelerate this process by coming into near and coming into sincere contact with Allah Jalla wa Ala. In Tansurullah Yang Surkum. If you offer victory to Allah, Allah will offer you His victory. How? Do we offer Allah of ourselves? One of the answers to this is by obeying Him. And one of the principal ways of obeying Him is observing in the true sense of the word what we are supposed to do and what we are supposed not to do throughout this month of Ramadan. There are breezes to Ramadan, like the breeze that we feel right now. And Allah says, expose yourselves to the breezes of Ramadan. Inna li Ramadan nasamat or lafahat or inna lillahi nasamat fata'arradu li nasamatillah Expose yourselves to the breezes of Ramadan or the breezes of Allah. وَإِن يَكَادُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَيُزْلِقُونَكَ بِأَبْصَارِهِمْ لَمَّا سَمِعُوا الذِّكْرَ وَيَقُولُونَ إِنَّهُ لَمَجْنُونٌ وَمَا هُوَ إِلَّا ذِكْرٌ لِلْعَالَمِينَ اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه ولا تجعله ملتبسا علينا واجعلنا للمتقين إماما ربنا أفرغ علينا صبرا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم انصرنا بالحق وانصر الحق بنا اللهم اجعلنا من عبادك فإن عبادك هم الصالحون اللهم اجعلنا من حزبك 
فإن حزبك هم المفلحون اللهم اجعلنا من جندك فإن جندك هم الغالبون اللهم اجعلنا من أوليائك فإن أولياءك لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون ربنا افتح بيننا وبين قومنا بالحق وأنت خير الفاتحين اللهم بك نحاول وبك نصاول وبك نقاتل اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى اللهم إنا نسألك العفو والعافية والمعافاة الدائمة في الدين والدنيا والآخرة وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على محمد وآل محمد كما صليت وسلمت وباركت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر إن الله يأمركم أن تؤدوا الأمانات إلى أهلها وإذا حكمتم بين الناس أن تحكموا بالعدل إن الله نعم ما يعظكم به إن الله كان سميعا بصيرا قوموا إلى صلاتكم إن الصلاة كانت على المؤمنين كتابا موقوتا ومن أظلم ممن منع مساجد الله أن يذكر فيها اسمه وسعى في خرابها أولئك ما كان لهم أن يدخلوها إلا خائفين لهم في الدنيا خزي ولهم في الآخرة عذاب عظيم اذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه ولا تكفوا ولا تكفرون قوموا إلى صلاتكم إن الصلاة كانت على المؤمنين كتابا موقوتا
generously to the cause of the law to the last honor and honor and reward you and keep you and grant you good health. And also, I'd like to announce that we have the perpetual lab calendar. If uh, you need one, you're welcome to pick one up. And uh, also, there will be on the occasion of the holy month of Ramadan, the lecture will be given by Dr. Adnan about these days of Allah, the days of Ramadan. And this will be, this program will be held at the Islamic Education Center on Friday, May the 1st, which is today. And this will be at 8 p.m. And also, dinner will be served. So if you can make it, um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.